Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 191. And for this one, we're at the Hustler Casino for a meetup game. Uh, get into a lot of big hands. You guys can love it. But uh, before we get started, one announcement. The next meetup game we're doing is actually at the Hustler. That'll, that'll be uh, February 5th and 6th. So if you want to play poker with Andrew and me, uh, come join the action. You guys are going to see how much fun it is in this episode. And uh, hopefully we'll see you. We'll see you at the next event as well. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. We're in beautiful Southern California for the last meetup game of the year. I arrive a day early to do some exploring with my girlfriend. Then it's time to go to The Hustler, where Andrew and I are hosting events once every two months. It's a very cool property, and 14 tables of log watchers show up to try and wreck my world. I'm going to be doing my best to prevent that from happening. Today we're playing 5-5. I buy into the game for 1,000, which is the max. Here's a look at the first table. There's a couple of guys with their Revenge Range t-shirts on, including this gentleman here, Gonzo. He came all the way from Mexico to join the meetup game action. It's great to see some brand new faces and some familiar ones too. At 1.33pm, we start the session and there's no time to relax. The very first hand we're dealt, we get involved with ace-queen offsuit in the cutoff. Since I'm getting situated, I don't see that it's a straddle pot and I raise to 15. The small blind calls, the big blind calls, and the under the gun straddler also calls. We're going four ways to the flop in position. The dealer puts out queen 4-4 four, four with two clubs. It's a pretty good one for us, although we have three opponents, someone may have trips. It's checked to me, I bet 25, I have the ace of clubs, making it less likely that I'll be up against a flush draw. I bet small so that people can call me lighter, and if anyone happens to have trips or better, I won't lose as much money. The small blind calls, the big blind and under the gun both fold, it's down to heads up. The turn is the king of hearts, I get downgraded, and to make matters worse, the small blind jams for 135. This lead jam seems a little odd to me. Very possible that I'm completely crushed. I can't help myself when I have an opportunity to stack someone though. I'm curious and I call. I could be up against some type of combo draw like Jack Nine of Clubs. As many of you probably imagined, we're not in good shape. The opponent shows six four of hearts. The river is the six of clubs giving the small blind a boat. I made a call that I definitely didn't have to make and I got punished for it. Right away I'm stuck. It could be a long session for me. First hand. Yep. I'm gonna be yeah, using that range. Okay. Six four, like a boss. Yeah. <laughs> we have found a villain for this episode, and we're coming for him. Just a few minutes later, we're dealt ace queen of hearts under the gun plus one with suited Broadway cards. I raised a twenty. The player who beat me in the first hand is apparently still coming for me. He three bets to fifty five from the hijack. Cut off cold calls. That's a bit alarming. I make the call for 35 more. We're going three ways to the flop out of position. It comes ace 5 4 with two clubs and one heart. We've got top pair and a backdoor flush draw. I check. The player we need to get revenge on bets 75. The cutoff folds. There's no reason for me to raise. I call to keep my opponent's bluffs in. He looks very unhappy that I'm still in the hand. The turn is the three of hearts giving us a flush draw. I'm concerned that if I check, the opponent will check back. I can't allow that to happen. I want to bet an amount that he'll have to call with hands like kings, queens, and jacks. Half the opponent's stack is already in the middle. I want to get some small part now and go for the rest of it on the river. I make it 60. Eight. All right. The opponent folded pocket eights face up after three betting me and C betting the flop. It's a friendly game, so I let him know what I had as well. Nice hold. Nice hold. With this win, I'm back up to the even mark on the day, but our primary opponent still has a few more of my dollars than I have of his. We're going to try and change that when we pick up 9-5 offsuit in the big blind. Five players limp in. I check. The flop comes ace-9-5 with a couple of diamonds. We've got bottom two pair. Small blind checks. I check. Under the gun checks. Under the gun plus one, who we've battled with in the previous two hands, bets 15. The hijack makes the call, the cutoff folds, the small blind calls, there are a lot of people showing interest in this pot, let's see if that's still the case when I raise to 100. Under the gun folds, under the gun plus one also folds, the hijack is a stubborn dude who doesn't want to let me have it, he calls. The small blind folds, it's heads up and there are a lot of cards that I won't want to see, especially diamonds. The five of clubs comes out and that's one that I'm okay with because now we're at the hustler motorboating. I've never been at a hustler establishment motorboating and not had a good time since there was no raise pre-flop and our check raise got called on the flop. It's very probable that the opponent was on some type of draw and now has zero outs. If he had a good ace, he would have raised pre-flop. We don't want to scare him off with a big bet. I put out 115 to string him along. Apparently, even the small sizing is too much. The player folds. I show the table that we filled up. The hijack would later tell me that he made a disciplined laydown with 8-7 of diamonds. 
He folded a flush draw with the gutter and had no chance of winning the pot. Still, a lot of people can't fold draws that big, particularly when they're getting a good price. We win another one and are up $100 on the session. Next, we look down at Pocket Kings under the gun plus one. I raised a 20. Three opponents behind me call. We're going four ways to the flop, out of position. It comes ace, queen, jack with two hearts. As often is the case with cowboys, we've got second pair. At least this time we've got a gutter, and it's a board that heavily favors me as the pre-flop aggressor. I don't want to have to check call my hand, so I bet 30 to either take it down right now, or keep control of the pot while allowing myself to see a turn for a relatively cheap price. The player in middle position folds, my nemesis, who's been involved in all the hands so far, calls. The cutoff folds, we're heads up, the turn is another queen, not a great card because the opponent could have a hand like king queen or queen 10, he also is probably not going to fold an ace. I slow down and check. The hijack immediately checks back, which I wasn't expecting to see. I doubt he checked that quickly with trips. Perhaps he has an ace, a flush draw, or a hand like jack-10. The river is the ace of hearts. I'm not beating anything except maybe king-jack or jack-10. I check, and the opponent right away bets 100. I doubt he'd necessarily do this for value with a flush. He checked back turn, so he's really only trying to represent aces full. He already made a boat on me earlier today. Could he have made another one in such a short time? He also 3-bet and tried to bluff me on an ace-high board with pocket 8s earlier. Maybe he's trying to get one through on me again. When people bet round numbers like 100 or 1000 and they do it in a quick manner, it tends to be a bluff. I call, and it's not a good one. The opponent shows that he has aces full like he was properly representing. He gets me good. I haven't made a call that bad in a very long time. Or at least since I made that bad call with ace-queen to start the session. I'm stuck again, it's time to switch tables where I have the hustler staff pour champagne for people who are about to make financial decisions against me. It's like the old saying goes, if you can't beat them, get them drunk and then beat them. Here we pick up king nine suited under the gun plus one. There's a straddle out there, I raised a 30. Four players call, we're going five ways to the flop, it comes ace eight four rainbow. Not much going on for us in this hand or seemingly anyone else who still has cards. We all check. The turn is the king of diamonds giving us second pair. It's checked to me. If the big blind or under the gun player had an ace, they probably would have bet by now. If the middle position opponent or the hijack had an ace, one of them probably would have bet on the flop. I could be best with a king. I put out a small bet of 40. I don't want to make it too big just in case someone's lurking around with an ace or a better king. Three opponents call. No one seems to be very happy though. They just didn't want to let me win with a tiny bet. I'm planning to shut down. Then the dealer puts out another king. We're back open for business dudes. We've got trips. Checks to me, I'm really hoping that someone has an ace at this point, I bet 120 for value. The hijack folds, the big blind's in the tank, he knows that it's down to him and the under the gun opponent to keep me honest, he's not sure if under the gun will be able to make the call, so the big blind puts his foot down and matches my bet, he's not going to let me bluff this one. Under the gun folds, I show that there's no bluff this time, king nine's good, we get a great run out in a multi-way pot, and we get paid off on the river. The bet sizes weren't that large, but with so many opponents calling pre-flop and on the turn, we profit $400 on the hand and are up $350 on the day. In this one, we've got pocket sevens in the hijack. I raised a 20. I can't even get past one player. The cutoff three bets is 65. The small blind calls. I don't see that the big blind still has cards and is on the brink of folding. I call out a turn on accident. Hey, well, I mean, oh, wait, he was holding the hand. Right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. I didn't see that. Uh, going four ways? Oh, uh, you're gonna win the pot now. You're about to pull. We're going four ways to the flop with two opponents that have good hands and one opponent who may not love his cards too much, but he was getting three to one on a call once he knew that I wasn't gonna four bet behind him. The flop comes jack six three with two diamonds. We've got second pair and some backdoor draws. We really wanted to hit a set, and that didn't happen though. He checks to me. I checked at the pre-flop three better. He surprisingly checks back. I doubt that he checked with top pair or anything stronger aside from maybe a set of jacks. The turn is another jack. It's possible that we've got the best hand. Small blind checks. The big blind hesitates a little and then bets 140. This is the player that almost folded pre-flop. He might be betting with a hand like a6 suited or 6-5 suited. He's a squirrely guy who could possibly think that he only has to get through me to win with a bet since there's no reason to believe that the small blind who was checked twice or the cutoff, checked back the flop, has a good hand. Even though I could be best, I don't want to call here and allow anyone behind me to call. I overwrap my hand and I raised a 350 to pretend like I've either got trip jacks, which I certainly will have in my range, or a full house with pocket sixes or threes, which I'll also have in my range. An added benefit is that I'll get hands like eights, nines, and tens to fold. My play will also ensure that anyone with a flush draw or overs will fold despite having equity. 
350 is another somewhat small sizing from me. Remember, I used this small sizing when I actually had a full house with 9.5 on the turn earlier. I'm using it as a bluff here. If the big blind actually has trips or a full house himself, I'm not going to lose quite as much money. The cutoff folds quickly. The small blind takes much longer before he eventually lets his cards go as well. It's down to the big blind who shows 1-9 face up. Then he folds before explaining why he almost didn't even call preflop. I was going to fold him because I thought he had an overpair. In nines? Yes. All right, we got that one through. We got that one through. I wasn't sure what to do with that hand, to be honest. Right. That was a strange spot to be in, but my play works out. I was able to deny equity from hands that I was beating, and I also got a hand that had me in terrible shape to fold. All of a sudden, I'm up $600. Then we had the table number three, where I'm dealt pocket aces, my very first hand here. The under the gun opponent was having some fun live trolling me as I set my racket chips down. He was calling me a nit, which is kind of funny considering I just got a big bluff through minutes earlier. I now have a good hand to punish him with after he raises to 15. The cutoff calls, I 3 bet to 80. I'm in a great situation because it looks like I may just be trying to get a bluff through on a guy who called me a nit to prove him wrong. In reality, I've got the best hand possible. Under the gun calls for 65 more, the cutoff also calls, we're going three ways to the flop, and the under the gun player may be Nostradamus because he correctly calls my hand, and then he makes a prediction. That sounds like a pretty good plan to me. I hope it becomes a reality. The dealer puts out 973 with two clubs. I have the ace of clubs, making it so I don't have to be too worried about someone having a flush draw and a three bet pot. I check to give my opponent some rope on a flop that typically won't be good for my range. The under the gun and cutoff both have relatively small stacks that I can still get all of, even if it checks through. The opponents don't fall from my trap, and it does check through. The turn is the jack of hearts. Time to get as much money piled in as possible. I bet 125. The cutoff actually only has 120 in her stack. Under the gun calls, leaving himself with 395 behind. Maybe he has ace jack or king jack. The cutoff thinks for a while before folding. It's down to heads up. The river is the five of spades. It's basically a brick. Under the gun has less than a pot size bet left in his stack. I bet an amount that has him covered. He correctly guessed my hand pre-flop, but perhaps my check on the flop has thrown him off the scent. After tanking for almost a minute, the opponent comes to a decision. When he says bad turn, I imagine that we were right with the assessment that he had top pair. We don't sack everyone, but we do fulfill some of Nostradamus' prophecy by stacking him with aces. That's a big pot that has us winning over 1200. We didn't get off to a good start today. It's not about how you start though, it's about how you finish. We run cold for a long time until we're dealt ace-queen offsuit in the big blind. It's a straddle pot. Under the gun plus one limps in with a short stack. A player in middle position calls. The cutoff raises to 30. I don't want to call and play out of position against multiple opponents. I three bet to 115 with what could easily be the best hand. Under the gun plus one isn't concerned. His name is Tron. Trons don't get concerned. He four bet rips it for 255. Yeah. It's not very much more for me, but there's a good chance that he has pocket aces since he just limp four bet jammed from early position. If he has anything else and I fold, it'd be a disaster. It folds back to me. I only need to put out 140 more to see a run out. I call. There's only one hand that I really don't want to see. It takes a little while for the opponent to show, but he's got that exact hand. I'm absolutely crushed at the moment. Jesus. Oh, trust me, I'm not out the woods. I am not out the woods. I am not out of the woods. Trust me. My boy got nine. Not good for you, Tron. With the three of spades on the turn, I'm drawing completely dead. There's no card that can come out that'll give me the winner. I can't let Tron know that, though. If he's going to double up through me, I at least need to have some fun with him. I am not out of the woods. I am never good. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Nice. We lose a medium-sized pot there. Tron's a good guy and deserves it. I just gotta try and put this one behind me and move on. We're dealt ace-queen once more, under the gun plus one. Under the gun limps in. We need to make the limper pay. I raise a 25. The cutoff calls. Under the gun calls as well. We're going three ways to the flop and it comes king-jack-10 rainbow. We flop the nuts. What's better is that under the gun leads for 25. I don't have much to be worried about. I call with plans to make a move on the turn. The cutoff folds. It's down to heads up. The turn is the jack of diamonds. The board pairing isn't ideal. Still, we probably have the best hand. The opponent isn't afraid. He bets 75. Despite no longer having the nuts, I stick with my initial plan and I raise the 200. 
Not much time goes by before the opponent announces a call. I'd love to see it blank on the river. We get one. The dealer puts out the seven of spades. We should still have the best hand. Under the gun checks. I'm going to continue betting for value. I make it 400. It'd be great if the opponent had trip jacks or at least a king. 45 seconds goes by, then the player folds. Someone else at the table would ask him if he had king queen, and he said that he had worse than that. Maybe he had king 10 and was counterfeited. It seemed more likely to me by the way that he responded that he had a hand like queen 10 or worse. We win a nice pot, then run cold for a long time. There are some other large pots that take place. Unfortunately, I don't get into any other interesting hands the last two hours of the event before racking up a big win. Played for seven hours. I won 13.20 tonight, and uh, I think I might be on like maybe certainly the best year-long run of my life. So really enjoying it. After after losing 10k, uh, I've won I don't know maybe 12 or 13 sessions in a row, and I've probably won somewhere around 20k. I'm trying not to look at the the poker app so that I'm not thinking too much about how I'm doing for the year but yeah I mean I'm well over the 50k goal I think I'm into the 60s now and things are going really well so we're at the bar Hustler's done an awesome job and uh, we're gonna be here once every two months so uh, just everything's going really well and very happy Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe button because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. Uh, big thanks goes out to The Hustler and uh, the staff out there. They always do a great job. Um, and uh, thanks to everybody who came out for, for this event. So the next event at The Hustler is going to be February 5th and 6th. That should be a lot of fun. And if you're in the area, come join Andrew and me for, uh, for some poker. Um, next episode, I have a huge announcement to make, uh, very, very excited for it. It's the biggest kind of thing I've ever shared with you guys. So, um, be on the lookout for that and, uh, hope you had a, a great, uh, a great Christmas and hope you have happy holidays. Good luck at the tables guys. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.